What is up, good people? Juggling here, hope you're doing well. The crypto market looking strong. Bitcoin crossing 36,000. Rest of the market green. Gotta love green. And I asked this question today. Now, I'm out of the prediction business, so I can't give you my target here for XRP. But I said, what do you expect out of XRP the next bull run? And it's quite mixed. There was no real runaway favorite here. $5, $10, $20 or higher. It's pretty evenly split, isn't it? A lot of people not sure where we're going to end up. And I think XRP is pretty tough because you look at the crypto space and you're like, well, can it grow to $6 trillion, $10 trillion? And you look at what Bitcoin was in the past, Ethereum, kind of get some targets depending on how big you think uh, this space will grow here in the interim. XRP is different, isn't it? Last time it was held back, we know that. Couldn't trade in the U.S. Can we gain that ground? Can we get back to where we should have been? and do a few multiples off of that. What's in store for us? I think it's gonna be quite explosive and very exciting. Uh, again, let me know down below what you think. What is your, you know, just general price target here for XRP for this upcoming bull run? And uh, just let me know what you think. It's interesting. Sometimes Twitter varies a little bit uh, from YouTube, so I wanna hear from you. Tom Member, now I always say, you know, the threats to defund the SEC might be a little hollow, but, Maybe this will work. He's saying he proposes to defund the SEC's crusade against crypto. Can he really cut uh, the SEC's financing specifically towards, you know, their attacks on Coinbase and Binance and other, uh, you know, big crypto companies out there? And would that just give everyone a free-for-all? If you're some kind of scammer, can you work with impunity just because the SEC can't come after you? How would this really work? I'm not sure if this has teeth or not. But it's an interesting take because I've always said you can't defund the SEC because you're putting everyone's retirement accounts and the whole stock market biggest in the world. You know, you'd be putting it in danger. You have to have an SEC. But is this something where in the interim you say, look, you can't use any funds specifically for cases against crypto companies until this space is addressed by Congress? To me, the answer is Congress needs to get going. And it's a tough environment to do it. You got to work with the Senate, get the president to sign off on that thing. But you got to pass some kind of crypto regulations. No excuse that this, uh, you know, this far down the road, we still haven't started making progress. They got to get rolling there. Uh, U.S. said to be in open talks with Grayscale on spot Bitcoin ETF push. You know, I don't know. Are they going to let Grayscale, uh, you know, enter with their uh, ETF alongside of uh, BlackRock, Fidelity, and all the other heavy hitters. Are these open talks really in good faith, or is this like the Braveheart thing? You remember when they had the open talks, you know, the peace talks, and then just killed everyone in the room? I don't trust the SEC. I feel they may be vindictive versus Grayscale. I would like to see Grayscale uh, get their ETF. They've been around forever. I've traded GBTC in the past. Um, you know, it's your one way to get into crypto uh, kind of directly, with a brokerage account, if you want to do that kind of thing. And so, you know, I hope they get it done. I'm not so sure the SEC won't be petty and let a few more through the door first. And the problem is first to market usually captures the market. That's why I'm pretty sure we'll see multiple ETFs, uh, you know, launch simultaneously. I think the only question is, will Grayscale be one of those first through, through the door there? Uh, we have the BIS. They are questioning and really criticizing stable coins as not being a safe storage of value. And we know that. Like you have to trust the intermediary to hold your funds. And probably the, the safest of all is Circles USDC. And even they almost got zapped when Silicon Valley Bank went under. And luckily those deposits were guaranteed and everything was fine. But again, anytime you're trusting someone, you know, there's going to be risk there, isn't there? I don't care who it is. And that's why even though stablecoins can be very efficient, a great tool for moving value, storing value, you know, cryptocurrencies, decentralized forms of money will always be superior because you don't need to trust that custodian. You got your wallet, you got your keys, you got your crypto and your value under your own control. You don't have to worry about an intermediary. So absolutely correct. And the same thing here. Uh, the Fed's bar sees stability risk in private crypto stable coins. Uh, I think this is the first area we will see crypto regulations and custodian requirements and reporting and auditing and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, I think we'll make great progress, uh, but we need to address that because you just can't 
You just can't trust that those intermediaries are holding the backing you're supposed to have with those stable coins, especially when you get into Tether and even worse when you get into other stable coins. Um, you know, this area needs some work, but there always will be more risk with stable coins. That's why we know long term crypto will still be around. HSBC to launch dig digital asset custody for tokenized securities. The bank will work uh, with their Swiss based partner on some new services. And the latest blockchain offering is expected to go live in 2024. HSBC, a giant, a giant globally, a Ripple partner, working on big things here. And we see my buddy, Mr. Use Case, and he's not totally off base here, but we see we went from not your keys, not your crypto to HSBC. Well, custody digital assets, well, who, like we're celebrating this, isn't that against the ethos of crypto? And yeah, you know, that's the whole point of crypto when you hold your keys. Uh, no one can take your money. No one can mess with your value. That's true. But there are use cases where you need custodians. You know, if you have a pension fund, an endowment fund, they're not going to put $50 billion on a Ledger Nano and put it under someone's pillowcase. Uh, even for big individual investors, it's not safe. You know, crypto is more dangerous than even cash because you someone gets a hold of you, whether it be for kidnapping or home invasion or whatever it may be, you know, they can zip your money to the other side of the globe in an instant. There's nothing you can do. The security reasons why people want to use custodial services as well. So we want to see this uh, built out. Does it mean crypto enthusiasts like us uh, can't still use self-custody? Does it mean that there's not uh, a specific use case in utility to self-custody? But that doesn't mean that big custodians don't have their place and will build value. They're just totally different use cases here. Don't forget, holding your own keys, how important that is, but understand why a lot of people will go the other route and have someone hold their value because they're just trying to invest like they would in a stock or in gold, and they don't want to take the risks associated with uh, you know holding the crypto. Plus, just airs. Like I just logged into my Litecoin uh, core wallet today. I'm like, you know what? What am I doing with this Litecoin? I'm going to zip it over and I'm going to buy some flare. So it's telling me I need some pass phrase or something. And I'm like, what is, I don't even remember setting that up. I went through a hundred thousand little books I have around here to see if I wrote it down somewhere. I'm sure whatever this passphrase is, I have it somewhere, but it's been so long and it's not like a password. I don't even know what this thing is. So, you know, even if you're careful and you keep good records and all of that, you can make mistakes. And I got this stupid Litecoin stuck on my server and I, I can't pull it off right now. So I'll have to keep searching around to find whatever that passphrase is and see if I can trade it for a little FLR. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of different tools here. And depending on what you're trying to do, you can utilize that. I think HSBC is big news, along with all the other people that are getting into crypto, like BlackRock, Fidelity, and uh, Grayscale. A uh, big speech by Tom Emmer. Man, this was killer. If you haven't watched it, go ahead and head over here to Bill Morgan, an easy way to get to this clip. But, man, Tom Emmer is just roasting the SEC. He points out the fact, you know, we don't have clear rules. The SEC refuses to give us guidance. And even more powerful than that, in his speech, he points out the Ripple case and the fact they were making erroneous claims about XRP and XRP was deemed not a security. Powerful moment for crypto, XRP, Ripple. And I think Tom Ember, man, he did a great job here. And he's really pushing the SEC and that's what we have to do. We have to have some sensible regulations in this country. Can't be a free for all. Can't mean that criminals can run wild. Uh, but we need to know what the rule of law is. So your real entrepreneurs can follow it. And then it becomes easier to find the bad actors, the people like Sam Bankman Freed. Then, you know, their actions are more easier to spot. Alex Cobb pointing this out. I can't believe it's already been a year, but we see this tweet. Uh, from SBF originally, a competitor is trying to go after us with false rumors. FTX is fine. Assets are fine. And I want you to keep in mind this. You know, people always say, oh, well, we've always met all withdrawals. You know, all your assets are there. Of course, they're always going to say that, even if they're at the brink of disaster. And the fact that, you know, everyone's been able to withdraw to date is not a big deal because you always can until the moment you can't. Until the moment something goes under. And then it's too late. So don't fall for this kind of stuff where some exchange or some Yahoo is telling you, well, every time someone's asked us uh, for a withdrawal, we've been able to meet it. That means nothing. Uh, that's just once you don't meet your first withdrawal, it's all over Red Rover. 
Uh, that's just the way this game works. Let me know what you think down below. And as always, please like, please subscribe. The revolution will be televised right here on Jungle Link.